Hey everyone, Brittany here from By Brittany Goldwyn and today I'm going to be sharing a tour of an IKEA greenhouse cabinet hack that I did for my birthday. So I know a lot of people do a lot of extravagant things with their greenhouse cabinets. They replace the shelves, they add humidifiers, ventilation, weather stripping. This is pretty much a pared down, stripped down version of an Ikea greenhouse. It works really, really well for what I need it for. Um, it's not to say that you can't do all that customization. I just wanted to let everyone know that you can have an awesome Ikea greenhouse cabinet without doing a ton of customization and putting a ton of work into um, adding components and things into it. So I'm gonna do a whole tour of it, talk about why I chose the unit that I chose for my cabinet since a lot of people choose another model at Ikea for their cabinets. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I do humidity, temperature, airing it out, and some of the plants I have in it. So let's start the tour. So here's a peek at my cabinet. Um, what I love about the Ikea Fabricor cabinet is that it has a really low footprint on the floor. It is pretty sizable, but it's mostly in its height. So since I live in a smaller townhouse, this is perfect for me. I have it in our little dining area, which gets great light from these two super bright windows. Um, I also love that this cabinet locks. I have a toddler, as you can see from the little play kitchen. So keeping her out of here um, and from fussing around with things is super handy because three-year-olds can be very nice. Um, I also really like that the shelves in it are adjustable. The base here obviously isn't because it's the base, the bottom shelf, but the two glass shelves that come with it are adjustable. And I know that a lot of people add in like different wire shelves and replace these and whatnot. And I'm not really sure why other people do it. I mean, it looks really cool, but like I was more than happy with these glass shelves. So I didn't feel the need to reinvent the wheel here. I feel like they're more than stable and I really like how it lets the light pass down through them. Um, and I can adjust them if my plants change in size or if I just want to rearrange things. So for a tour of the little cabinet here, on the base I have a Leica propagation. I feel like having some of the Leica propagations in here really helps keep the ambient moisture and humidity levels up. I have a little variegated rubber plant propagation down here, which is finally getting a new leaf sprouting from the top there. I have my beloved Birkin philodendron, which had a tiny spider mite infest infestation, so I'm keeping it here in the cabinet just to keep humidity levels up, so hopefully nothing returns until I can get it to the spring and summer. And then I have one of my um, philodendron micans plants down here as well, which um, also known as the velvet leaf philodendron, they really like humidity in general. In the bottom here, you can see a little peek at the hole I drilled in just using an electric cordless drill and a regular drill bit. Um, so I could feed the main cord for the light bars down through it and then plug it in behind the cabinet. This is super convenient because you don't have to drill any holes in the glass or anything or run the cord elsewhere. So the first bar for the two light bars is here um, on the bottom of the top shelf, which lights the second shelf or the middle shelf. I've got this Monstera Dubia here, which my wonderful friend sent to me after he imported it from um, somewhere in Southeast Asia. I'm not sure where, but it had a little bit of a rough trip to Texas and then to Maryland. So um, you can see it's a little faded and hopefully being in the cabinet will be super helpful. I have a couple other Hoyas here. I really love Hoyas. Um, they're such easy plants, but they do do so well in higher humidity levels. Check out that gorgeous big rope plant in the back. I also have a couple Syndapsis trubii dark form plants. This is the first and it's getting its first leaf, yay. Um, and then the second I'll show you in a second, it's in the little face pot there. I find that some of the plants that are just really struggling to take root and take off just do well with a little bit of extra humidity and that's what I've done with this Monstera propagation here. Um, it just was not taking off in soil. It wasn't doing well in any other environment. So I put it in some sphagnum moss and perlite. And in addition to just having it in the higher humidity cabinet, I put a plastic bag over it to help really keep the moisture levels high in there. And this is by far one of my favorite plants right now. My two leaf Trubii dark form, which I'm desperately hoping gets another leaf this spring when things warm up, but they are such frustratingly slow growers. So in here you can see that um, the cord runs down the right side here between the window on the side of the cabinet and um, the shelf. It just fits right down below through the gap between the two. I didn't have to drill any holes or anything. Um, one cord splits off to the left and puts the bar right there. 
on the to light the middle shelf and then the other cord goes all the way up to the top to put the light bar to light the top shelf. So I've got my temperature and humidity gauge up here. I don't have a humidifier or a fan in here. I just rely solely on ambient moisture from my propagations and watering the plants. It usually hovers in the high 60s to low 70s, but it is a little bit lower here, 58%, just because I have the cabinet open to air it out and get some air circulation going. So you can see up here on the top level, I've got just a couple propagations, um, a couple more things in some plastic bags for some added humidity and some more Hoyas. I love my Hoyas and mistletoe cactus there in the back. Oh, and one other note, I do like really like these clear acrylic display shelves. You can see them in this view here. You'll see the one yeah, right there under the cement pot just to help um, raise things and create some different levels in there. And then you can see how the light bar cord runs down the side of the greenhouse and then goes over and feeds down through that hole that I drilled. So here's just another view of the exterior and then I've got a lot of my snake plant collection here on the top of the greenhouse because they don't really require that extra humidity but I love looking at them and they look perfect up on there. So yeah, that's my IKEA hack greenhouse cabinet. Um, a lot of people put a lot of effort into theirs. I tried to keep mine pretty low effort, low energy, low maintenance, just to see how things go. And they've been going really well so far in terms of temperature, humidity levels, and general happiness of the plants. So if you're interested in the light bar, I will link it down below in the description. Um, and I will link the little temperature gauge as well. If you want any more plant content, I will definitely be putting more plant content up on my channel here and then I have a ton of plant care and propagation guides and DIYs on my blog by brittanygoldwin.com also linked below in the description so make sure to hit subscribe if you want to check out more of my content and until then I hope you enjoy your IKEA greenhouse cabinet research